I would like to take a moment to say a few words about Episode 8. Episode 8 died very young. It never got a chance to see the world, and the world never got a chance to see it. Did you know that if you make a local recording using OBS, and you don't have enough hard drive space, that's a very bad thing. <laughs> yeah. This is actually the first time I have ever run out of hard drive space while recording. But it happened. It finally happened. And the end result is an MP4 file that is mostly intact, but not completely intact. So episode 8 ended up being 30-something gigabytes, which is quite large, but it wasn't quite the full file. And if OBS doesn't get a chance to write the end of the file, it becomes unplayable. So I have a massive block of unplayable video that is, or was, episode 8. So yes, rest in peace, episode 8. It is forever gone. And yes, I tried to fix it. It's really, really not... It, it might be possible, but it's really difficult. Like, I tried to use a hex editor to copy the header or the footer, I'm not quite sure which, from a working MP4, and then pasted it in, and not surprisingly, that didn't work. Uh, anyway, suffice to say, Episode 8 will never exist. So that leaves me in a little bit of an awkward position. I know that definitely sucks for you because there is a missing gap. And that gap is perhaps going to be a little bit confusing. However, it actually happened at a relatively opportune time. In terms of plot, because not a lot of the plot really advanced. So all I really lost was me solving these two puzzles. This red one here, and that red one over there. That's mostly it. So the story didn't really advance, for the most part, except for one little thing that I'll talk about. So it's actually not that big of a deal. For the most part, it's pretty much just a blow to my ego, because I actually solved these two puzzles in, these two puzzles in really interesting ways that made me very proud of myself. And you'll never get to see it. <sighs> That's really depressing. So, I apologize for that. I have, of course, taken the liberty of cleaning my hard drive, and now I have about 300 gigabytes free as of me talking right now, so I'm definitely not going to run out of space. So let me just briefly take you through each of these puzzles. I'm not going to solve them, but let's just show you what's going on. So this one's called Deception. Which is a very clever name that actually helped me solve the puzzle. So this one is basically this. The, uh... The thing that I needed, the sigil, was right in here. So it's right at the very beginning of the puzzle. And of course it needs blue power. And at the beginning is also red power. So you have a power source and you have a thing that can accept power. It all seems so very simple except for the fact that this is red and that's blue. So you can just forget about this for quite a while because that is going to be the very end of the puzzle. And then what you have going on here is basically... You have like three or four connectors, and three or four different gates. So you open this one up. And then you go in here, and then you can open this one up. And then you go in here, and you finally have the blue. Uh, was there another connector? Yeah, so you need to use this one to open this up. Hell, I actually might be able to resolve it. And then there's another connector. I'll just show you up to the fun part. Okay, so this is kind of the first, my first pass through the puzzle was this. So I've basically just gone around in a circle. Open, open, open. Finally gives you access to the blue. Keep going forwards. Open this. But if you notice, I need one more connector, right? There's one more step missing. And you can't position this in such a way as to hit that connector and hit that through there. Because if that's in view, then that's not in view. So if you want to open this, 
then you can only open this, you can't actually get it to go over there, so you do need another connector. If I was to continue going this direction. However, this is the fun part of this puzzle. I was thinking, I got to this point and I thought, okay, it seems like the progression of the puzzle is suggesting to me that I'm supposed to find another connector or something like that and continue the blue out here. You know, like use this connector to connect between there and there. That is the flow of the puzzle, the progression. But the name of the puzzle is Deception. So I thought, wait a minute, maybe something else is going on. So what I ended up doing was actually going backwards. The deception is that it suggests, it seems to suggest that you're supposed to carry the blue out this direction. But you're not. You're actually supposed to carry the blue back the way you came. Now, as for how that actually works out... Honestly, I don't quite remember. But it does. So you actually go back the way you came. Yeah, that was a really cool puzzle. Let's just briefly go through the other one. There's a lot less to show for this one. <laughs> the name of this name of this one is really cool. Bichromatic Entanglement. Alright, so it throws you two connectors. At least at the beginning here. And... As you can see, I'm using the blue to open that force field over there. Now, it would be very nice, wouldn't it? If I could use one of the connectors and just put it here and connect directly to that. Because then I wouldn't have to use two connectors to go around the corner, I could just use one. The problem with that is that to do that, I would need to keep this open. How do I keep that open? Well, I could do that, right? Okay, now the red's open. So it seems like I could just move this here and connect it to that. Only that doesn't work because as soon as I disconnect the blue, this force field goes up, which blocks the red, which blocks that. So this whole thing just falls apart if you do that. And um, I'm not sure if I solve this the correct way. But what I ended up doing to solve this was I actually did the trick that I used a long time ago to get the star. And that trick is that I used the connectors here. I won't do the whole thing, but I used the connectors here to get the red power over here to the entrance. And then I collected the red power on the other side. which gave me a source of red power that did not require this force field to be down. And that's how I ended up getting to the point where I actually could put the blue connector right here while keeping this open. It was pretty messy. And as the name suggests, the bichromatic entanglement, it was very entangled. I thought at any moment the whole thing would come apart, but somehow it ended up working. And also while solving this puzzle, I also learned something new. And that is this. So once you get this open, you need to hold that down if you want to get to the sigil, which is at the very end there. There's another force field. And I was the first thing I thought of was I need a box. Because so far I've used boxes to keep those keep those down, to weigh them down. So I was scratching my head thinking, where the hell's the box? Because there isn't one here. There is no box in this puzzle. And that's when I realized you actually don't need a box to keep those down. You can actually use any one of these things that you can carry to keep it down. So I actually used one of these connectors to weigh that switch down. So very, very good to know. Alright, so that's it for the puzzles. Uh, the only last thing that happened, which I don't believe was in the last episode... Um, I, I believe this did happen during the Lost episode, not during episode 7. And that is that... After I finished these two puzzles, another thing popped up on the computer. And it was a customer satisfaction survey. It was basically the computer saying that... You seem to be dissatisfied with the fact that we don't think you're a human. Would you... Like, how would you rate your experience with the support ticket system sort of thing? 
And I basically told it, well, it's freaking horrible, I hate you. This is the worst support system ever. And... Then the computer started talking to me. Basically, it started having a conversation with me. And it started asking me... It basically said, You seem frustrated that, that we don't think you're human. And it wanted me to prove that I'm human. Like, it wanted me to think about... Why I think I'm conscious. You know, it's like, okay, you think you're a human. You want us to think you're a human. Why? Why do you think you're human? Why do you think you're conscious? Why do you think you're alive? And the conversation never came to any sort of conclusion, but basically got to the point where the program was saying, okay, I don't actually know how to prove that you're human, if you actually are. And then the last thing it said was something like, I'm gonna try to like see if I can find a way to prove that you're human. So I think it's trying to come up with some sort of a test for my humanity. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I think that fills in the gaps. And I do have a neat little surprise, by the way. Which I will, I guess, reveal how that's going to work later. But yes, consider it an apology for having the lost episode. But it should be pretty cool. Basically, I'm going to be doing some translating on the screen pretty much live, as you'll see soon. But we'll get to that when that happens. We'll get to that when something actually needs to be translated. So let's move on to number seven, because number six is completely done. I did the first two puzzles on episode seven. On episode eight, the lost one, I did those two, and I've gotten a star. So 100% complete. Although there still is the mysterious extra boxes in the main level, and I still have no idea what those are about. Because there's no more stars to get, so I don't know why I would need those boxes, but it seems like they must be for something. I don't know. It's... suspicious. That sky is beautiful. She examined the symbol on the fragment she'd found in the buried city. Again, the owl. What could its significance be? It seemed as if they had been scattered about in the labyrinth by some unseen hand, for a purpose that yet eluded. Most likely, the owl was the sigil of the author of these words, which had so... something something something. A nebulous memory, as if from a previous life. The owl was the symbol of... And the goddess outside, under the moon, or perhaps on the city walls, when the wind rose. But there was no time to contemplate this further now, for the automatons had seen her, and their mechanical arms extended towards the fragment and ran as their beams converged on... The automatons had seen her. Hmm. She examined the symbol on the fragment she'd found in the buried city. She keeps seeing an owl. I wonder if I can find an owl. Hmm. Okay. So, th there's kind of stuff to translate in this one. So what I'm going to be doing is actually translating the hexadecimal into text. And I'm actually going to be doing that in a way that you can actually see. Instead of just like translating it and putting it in the comments. But I'm not... like, this is a mixture of what might be hexadecimal and also just random crap. I mean... An exclamation mark and modulo sign, like, those aren't hexadecimal. So I don't know if I can translate this. 
But let me try. So let me show you how this is going to work. So I've set up OBS in such a way that I can do this. I know the game audio has stopped. So here's what I can do. Let me switch scenes. There we go. Okay. So this is my hex editor that I have here. So if I type hex into this, it will actually translate it into text on the right side. So let me just see if I can... Let me just see if this even has meaningful text. I don't know if it actually does. Uh, 49, let's try that. That's I. So I'm, I'm just starting from here. 49, 20. That's a space, apparently. I... And then exclamation mark isn't even a thing. But then 14, D2. That's not even hexadecimal. D is not in hex. Okay, so this is just gibberish. So this can't really be translated in any meaningful way. I think it's too corrupted. Let me move that off the screen. There we go, but it should be a nice and more visual kind of live way of converting this stuff. Which I think will be helpful for both the viewers to actually just see it right there and see it translated. And also helpful for me. Because this information could be very useful in the immediate future. So instead of like waiting a couple episodes and then translating it later or something like that, I think this just this just works out better. Singularity discussion. Comment 104. You know, the more I think about it, the more I believe that no one is actually worried about AIs taking over the world or anything like that. No matter what they say. What they're really worried about is that someone might prove, once and for all, that consciousness can arise from matter. And I kind of understand why they find it so terrifying. If we can create a sentient being, where does that leave the soul? Without mystery, how can we see ourselves as anything other than machines? And if we are machines, what hope do we have that death is not the end? What really scares people is not the artificial intelligence in the computer, but the natural intelligence they can see in the mirror. Interesting. I think I agree with that. Aw, oh, this still doesn't have anything to translate. Oh well, hopefully it'll happen in this episode. Nadia Sarabhai, A-M-A, -A. so that's an Ask Me Anything, right? As one of the founders of the modern science of nomadics, many credit you with inventing the term itself. How do you see the state of the science today? Sorry, I said science twice. Mixed. On the one hand, the existence of the Institute for Applied Nomadics and a couple of similar organizations is highly encouraging. On the other hand, the degree to which science is seen as serving purely military or corporate cause, causes is, in my opinion, stopping us from exploring many important avenues of research. In a sense, it's people like Alexandra Drennan, who are the real pioneers today, who have the enthusiasm and dedication that the system as a whole seems to be lacking. Do you think technology poses a danger to humanity? No. Technology is just a tool. What we do with it is up to us. The Extended Lifespan Project. Crazy or visionary? Both. Wait. Arcady... Crazy or vision... Both? Arcady is at you? And then everything gets like corrupt and stuff? What the hell? Yeah, the whole thing just goes off the rails at this point. Wait, 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 wait. What did, hold on, what actually happened here with the whole corruption? Do you... Arcady, is that you? How... I guess I just, I mean, I'm trying to see if this is like some weird sort of meta thing. Or if this is just part of the actual Ask Me Anything. I think it might just be part of the Ask Me Anything. But why did she answer twice? 
Crazer Visionary both, Crazer Visionary both, and then Arcadia's at you. It's almost like the Arcadia's at you was added afterwards. As if they were communicating through... Uh, by editing things that were already there. Uh... I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just reading too much into it. Anyway, here's an email that has somehow found its way here. Scenario Generation. So far, all the puzzles are solvable, and completely within the necessary parameters. Alexandra had some more tweaks she wanted to suggest, but I think we're heading in the right direction here. Okay, so they want the puzzles to be solvable. Interesting. I wonder why they have to be solvable. So it sounds like the big project that they were working on was the Extended Lifespan Project. But how are they planning on extending life? That's what I'm wondering. You know, I just realized, I just said a little while ago, I said D is not part of hexadecimal. That's not true at all, actually it is. It's, um... A, B, C, D, E, F is actually part of hexadecimal. Because, uh, in case you don't know, actually, hexadecimal has... Basically, there's 16 different values that can be represented by one symbol. So you have 0 through 9, which is your 10 different possible values there, that you typically get from our numbering system. But then what, hexa what hexadecimal does is it adds on an, ad an additional 6. So basically, the numbers go from 0 to 9, and then after 9, they go A through F. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then A, B, C, D, E, F. So F would represent the value 15. And yeah, so D is actually part of hexadecimal. When I was in ninth grade, my parents took me to Pompeii. At first, I was amazed by the feeling of walking through an ancient city. But then I suddenly got scared. I realized that... I was walking through a real place where real people had lived, people like myself, with mothers and fathers and lives and hopes and dreams. And now it was all gone forever. I ran to my father, crying, and told him about this. And he said, I remember so clearly, he said, yes, but we are here. So long as there are people in the streets, the past isn't really gone. That makes me think of two interesting things. So one is that... Was your experience in Pompeii the inspiration for the looks of this place? I don't actually know what Pompeii looks like. And the other is what she said. Or rather, what she said her dad said. As long as we're here. As long as we're here. And remember the thing I read a little while ago? Where was it? Was it Classic Philosophers? No. The one that was really hard to read. A simple Principle? No, which one was it? Was it the journal? No. I'm not sure which one had it. Oh, I think it was this one. Yeah. yeah. So this one, the takeaway this and who would be so mad as, mad as to spend his life amidst toils and dangers. This was basically talking about how people want to be remembered, right? And she was just saying how her dad had said, as long as we're here, basically, it's still alive. And I was wondering how they intended to extend lifespans. Is that somehow related? I don't know how those could be related, but 
Maybe. I mean, that's a weird way to ex extend lifespans. I mean, if you want to extend your lifespan... I, I mean, getting remembered forever is nice, but you're not really alive to actually benefit from that, so who cares? I don't know. Anyway, there's actually something here I can translate. So yeah, here's some hexadecimal. So let me... Oh. Crap, which one was it? Progress report? Yeah. Okay. So if I drag this on here, let's put it above. Let's switch to the other scene. There we go. Okay, so if I translate this stuff, I can actually turn it into text. So I'm going to start doing that, and I'll be right back when I'm done. Okay, there we go. So it's a bit of kind of meta commentary. So this was this is in the thing talking about how they're using an existing game engine for the simulation. And I was talking about how this was sort of meta already. Because they did actually use an existing game engine to make this game, the, the Serious Sam engine. And it looks like it literally explicitly even mentions that. So as translated part says, after some back and forth we've decided to use the, and there's an S, and then it continues, the Serious Engine 7.5, which Crow Team have kindly made available to us. Very, very meta. Switch back to the other scene. There we go. Okay. Alright, this one has a lot of puzzles, and it's quite large. Let's go for the green ones first. Well, actually, first let's explore around and see if there's any little hidden doodads. There's little markings on that stone, but I don't know if that means anything. I am going to keep an eye out for an owl symbol. Because of what that text said about somebody finding an owl symbol. Whoa. What the hell is that? <laughs> Wait, what? This, this pillar has a serial number? Is that a 9? 3... Nine one nine seven two. One nine seven zero. What the hell? Is it on everything? Is that a nine? I don't know if that is. The first one, I mean. I mean, I guess what else could it be? Actually, I think it's a seven. Yeah, I think it is a seven. So three, seven, one, nine, seven, two. I guess I'll write that down. Three, seven, one, nine, seven, two. And then the other one says three, seven, one, nine. Three seven one nine. It's kind of faded. Is that two zeros? Seven one nine zero zero. I'm gonna put a question mark above the zero because I don't know if that one's correct. Hmm. Hmm. Where's your serial number? Oh, wait a minute, you do have one, don't you? I think that's one. I can't even read it, though. Do you have one? This is weird. I mean, the numbers don't actually matter if there's nowhere I can enter them. So at the moment, I suppose they don't really matter. 
And it seems like not every piece of stone has them. Weird. I have read a message on a wall that speaks of a world of endless sand. I would like to make it far enough to see that. There's some more paint. Everything I do now, I do for those who come after me. Yet, in doing so, I find peace for myself as well. This paradox is the foundation of my existence. You've changed. Oh wait, did, I think I might have read that backwards. Seek out those in this world that would help you. Though only one of us can transcend, we will all share in both the burden and in the rewards. Wait, only one of us can transcend. So that's the point of this, is one transcending? That does fit in with what we know. That they're throwing just like tons of processing power in the form of various different AIs at some sort of a problem and hoping that one will finally be able to solve it at some point. But again, I don't understand how I'm... What problem am I, am I solving? Is the problem how to make an AI that is actually conscious? Is that the problem? But if so, then how do I prove that? Certainly solving these puzzles doesn't prove that in any way. I think there was a QR code that I missed. Somewhere back here. I had a full-blown conversation with the entity in the archive today. Can't say it was terribly helpful. Still, perhaps I can charm some information out of it further down the line. The entity in the archive? Is that the thing I've been talking to through the computer? These spaces make no sense. I walk into a dead end and materialize in a garden. One is day, the other night. The space is not real. <laughs> Said James too because one was taken. You know, I just realized that I hear the sound of seagulls, but I don't see them. I think there's a computer over there. Okay, well, I could, I'm sure I could spend a lot of time looking for secrets around this island, but... Uh, I want to end this episode with solving a puzzle, so let's go do one of the green ones. Should be relatively easy. Locked from inside.
Now I'm just looking for serial numbers and hidden buttons everywhere. Like, my god. There could be anything anywhere. What do you bet there's a gold star behind there or something? Oh, never mind. Spoke too soon. Locked from inside. Do I need to lock myself inside? How would that work? Okay, what if I was to take the power over here? Well, it doesn't actually matter. Because a laser beam can't go through bars. And this is obviously what goes down at the end once you've solved it. Um, I think I need to move this. Probably more like... I can't put it on the top of this thing, can I? Nope. Yeah, probably at as extreme of an angle as possible. Maybe. Well, maybe not. Let's try that. Okay, so yeah, now I could open that, but I really want to open this. Can I do it? I think I can. Yeah, I can just do it. Okay, so now I have two connectors to work with. Excellent. So now at this point, I don't care about keeping this open. They're just throwing connectors at my face. I'm guessing the last step is going to be a little bit difficult, though. Okay, so I need red power. Um, oh, I can... <laughs> it's locked from the inside, so I can unlock this. Gotcha. Which... Now that that's done, uh, what can I take out of this without ruining the whole thing? Because the thing is, if this closes... No, no, this is good. Yeah, so this is powered by this, which is in here, so I can take away all the red things, and I'll still be okay. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in fact, I actually have extra connectors. Is there anywhere I could use that? Perhaps there's a star somewhere in here? It's pretty unlikely. I mean, most likely the star is probably in with the red puzzles. Not a green one. Um, oh, right, I need red. So I do actually need two, then. I do. That's it. I don't see anywhere secrets could be. At least nothing obvious. No hidden wires. Didn't find any buttons. Nah. Yeah, the star's probably in with the red puzzles. Okay, so I think I will end this episode here. So yeah, once again, apologies for the perhaps hard-to-follow flow, thanks to the missing episode, but it wasn't too much... You know, it wasn't too much that got lost, and hopefully my little summary at the beginning cleared that up. And hopefully, the little trick of converting stuff from hexadecimal into actual text is pretty cool. It's always fun to do. Yeah. Pretty cool. So, I hope you have enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.